A key problem for Republican theory was how to structure political institutions so that governments would remain limited in their power and not degenerate into absolutism or tyranny. Every American schoolchild learns about the wonderful checks and balances of the federal government, whereby each of the three branches, executive, legislative, and judicial, checks the other two. What these schoolchildren are not told, however, is that even James Madison, the so-called father of the Constitution, was highly skeptical that this system would accomplish its intended purpose. Indeed, Madison later criticized this as a mere parchment barrier, parchment barrier, his words, to the abuse of power. Because each branch, following the natural tendency of power to expand, would encroach not inward into other political spheres, but outward into the sphere of society. The power of each branch would expand, Madison predicted, not by taking power from the other branches, but by taking freedom from the people. The real separation of powers, argued Madison in the Federalist Papers, was that between the state and federal governments. Individual states, jealous of their own power, would resist encroachment by the federal government. This is why so many Jeffersonians were in favor of states' rights, a position that has frequently been perverted by modern conservatives. The Jeffersonians knew full well what conservatives seemed not to know, namely that a state government can become as tyrannical as any federal government, though they thought this was less likely to occur. The point was not to defend the power of states per se, but rather to introduce competition and conflict between the state and federal governments, so that neither could become tyrannical. The restraint of power, not the distribution of power, was the ultimate concern of these early states' writers. Madison and Jefferson eventually adopted an extreme position on this, when in their Virginia and Kentucky resolutions, they defended the authority of states to nullify federal law. John Calhoun picked up this ball some years later and ran with it when he affirmed the right of southern states to nullify the federal tariff. This precipitated the nullification crisis of the 1830s. Though Jefferson and Madison hoped that the separation of powers would restrain the growth of government, neither had the kind of blind faith in this system that is so common today. Both were empiricists, that is, both had a look-and-see attitude about the political world. Clearly, the system has not worked very well, especially in the 20th century. The American government, by their standards, has long ago degenerated into tyranny, long ago, exercising precisely the kind of unjust powers that Jefferson complained about in the Declaration of Independence. Significantly, those theorists who upheld the doctrine of separate powers also defended the right of resistance, almost to a man. They insisted that the ultimate check on abuse of power must lie with the citizens themselves who will stand up and protect their liberty by physical force, if need be.